I've had get back in the kitchen as a joke, or get to the back of the room. It felt ridiculous. Just, I constantly felt like I had to prove to someone that I was good. Overall, I think the music industry has a gender problem. Women make up just 20% of artists signed to UK record labels and approximately just 12.5% of UK music producers. I'm going to be exploring the challenges facing female musicians and speaking to five women who are doing their bit to end sexism and inequality. We keep behind closed doors Every time I see you I die a little more Stolen moments You might recognise this song as Secret Love Song by Little Mix, but this is the original by Rachel Ferner, who co-wrote it about falling in love with her manager. So I wrote that song three years before it was heard. We wrote it within maybe half an hour, an hour, and I was had tonsillitis. I was very upset by the, what I was writing and I forgot all about it. Three years later, someone just hears my really rough demo. A week later, they're recording it. A few months later, it's released as a single with Jason Derulo on it. And I, that was my first proper thing. Rachel Ferner is a songwriter from Northamptonshire. She started out as an artist 12 years ago. 2008, I got signed to my first deal. I then got dropped from that deal when I was like 17. I then got re-signed when I was 18 and I did that journey until I was about 21, 22. And I, it was going really well and I decided to walk away from being an artist to the shock of a lot of people around me. You have to have nerves still and you have to have energy that goes on for days and you have to have you know the thicker skin and I do and I did and I still do but it definitely got to the point where I thought cool I'm going to take a little break from this for a second. After a five-year career in the spotlight Rachel signed to Universal Music as a songwriter. As part of her job Rachel works in writing teams and she says that she's lucky to be able to choose to work with a lot of women However, the lack of women in the industry is something she's noticed. And according to a recent report by Vic Bain, she's right. Only 14% of songwriters signed to UK publishers are female. I've done writing camps where there's 20 men, one woman, and that woman is me. Where's the women? I look around and go, where's the women? There are no women. It's just me. There's been writing camps for female artists, and it's all men. And the women writers have gone, hello, you could have invited us. Like, we all, you know. So there's, there's huge problems. The problems don't stop there. Rachel has also been on the receiving end of sexism from some men who she's worked with. I've been called a diva because I knew what mic we should have recorded on. I don't know why that's diva-ish, but fine. I've had get back in the kitchen as a joke. Or get to the back of the room. And I go, and I give them my opinion on that comment and you just have to stand up for yourself and go I hope you don't speak to other women like that because you're really 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 doing terrible things in the music industry. Music producer and mother Olga Fitzroy spends most of her time in her home studio mixing music for theatre productions like this one Bradley 418 by Ballet Boys. Olga is part of the estimated 90% of musicians who are self-employed. You may think that the freelance life is better for those who want a family because you can work more flexible hours and be your own boss. But when Olga became a mum, she realised that life as a freelancer wouldn't be flexible at all. When I had a kid, aged 33, I think, 34, um, I obviously went off work, had my baby, but as a freelancer I realised only the woman in a couple is entitled to any leave, only the woman is entitled to maternity allowance, self-employed men aren't entitled to anything, which means that if you're in a self-employed couple, as a mum, you're the one that takes all the time off. Shared parental pay is only available to couples who work for the same employer. They can share 50 weeks of leave, either taking it together or separately. This means that they can both have an equal chance to bond with their baby. 
but there's no equivalent for freelance couples, meaning that Olga had to look after her newborn son on her own, with her husband taking holiday from his employer to try and help her. It was just, it felt ridiculous. It just made me really angry because there was no good reason to not allow men and women to share that amount of money. It wasn't even like I was saying, oh, we need extra money. I was literally saying, please, can I share this 150 quid a week, whatever, whatever it is, with my husband so that I can resurrect my career so that my career doesn't crumble. It took Olga 18 months to be earning the same amount of money as before she'd had a baby. Angry about how unfairly freelance women like her were being treated, Olga set up the Parental Pay Equality campaign to raise awareness and to meet others in the same situation. So I got in touch with various MPs and with my union, the Musicians' Union and with the Music Producers Guild and just started knocking on doors and explaining the situation and I lucked out when I met the now Shadow Culture Secretary Tracy Braben and she'd been an actress so she really understood um, what it's like to be a freelance mum and she took up my cause and did a thing called a 10 minute rule bill which is a private members bill. So she basically brought a law to parliament uh, based on what I'd been talking to her about and we had a big demonstration outside, got lots of press and it passed its first reading. Unfortunately, it didn't pass its second reading, um, but you know it was the first step and it raised a lot of awareness for it. So we're hoping to do more with it in, in this parliament. What about the women? We have been left behind, underpaid, under-respected, undermined for centuries. 28-year-old Charlotte Carpenter is a singer-songwriter from Market Harborough. She started out in music when she was at university, gigging in different cities alongside her degree. And it's at these gigs where she developed her own acoustic sound. But she found that the one thing holding her back was in fact her guitar. You know, being a woman with a guitar, there was a lot of misconceptions of that. There was, you know, oh, oh so you're, you're a folk singer. And I was like, well, not really, no. Where did you get that idea from? And that was because I used my own name and I was playing an acoustic guitar. I used to get comments like, oh, you're really, you're really good on the guitar for a girl, which is just ridiculous. And back then I used to take it as a compliment because I thought, oh, that's great. That means, you know, I'm better than all the other women, but what a load of rubbish. Like, why on earth did I think that was a compliment when I was 21? Tired of being undermined and discriminated against, Charlotte wanted to bring women like her together to support each other. So Charlotte set up her own record label, Baby Woman Records, named after her song of the same name, which you're hearing now. We're helping each other book tours, we're showing press contacts, radio contacts, things and people that we've met along the way. Why keep it to yourself? When I first started out in music, I felt like it wasn't that simple. Women were competing a lot against each other, and not because we wanted to, because we were felt like we had to, you know. I thought, no, I need to, I need to get out of this mentality. I want to create something where we're working together more, and we're just having fun, you know. If we're not having fun, then you know what are we doing? Charlotte isn't the only trailblazer fighting against inequality. Vic Bain, the former head of the British Association for Songwriters, Composers and Artists, noticed that only 6% of winners at the Ivan Novello Awards were women. And when she left Basca in 2018, she made it her mission to see just how many women are represented in each area of the music industry. And what she found, she was very disappointed with. So I looked at 229 record, record labels and the, um, the overall percentage of, of, of women signed was just under 20 percent. So one in, one in five mus musicians is a, is, a, is a woman. And that, that, you know, that did disappoint me. I thought it was going to be about a third, but actually for it, for it to be a fifth is really it's like, what's going on? What kind of message do you think this is actually putting out towards young, budding female musicians? That it's difficult, that they are going to be, um, you know, discriminated against in, in, in ways which 
are, some t are sometimes going to be obvious, but sometimes not going to be obvious as well, but they will be discriminated against. So it's, hard, it's harder for women. It's clear that musicians are doing their bit to end sexism, but what are the industry bosses doing to help women who are being treated unfairly and to bring a 50-50 gender split into the workplace? Key Change is a pioneering international initiative um, that empowers women and gender minorities um, to transform the future of music um, through a talent development programme, but also through a pledge. So we encourage organisations to um, sign up to try and achieve a 50-50 gender balance by 2022. Maxi Gage is a drummer in the band Graceland, but she's not only beaten the drums on this track called Flamingo, she's also beaten the drums for Equality as the project manager of the PRS for Music Foundation's Key Change Initiative. I think a big first step is acknowledging that there's a problem um, and then kind of committing as an organisation to be part of the solution. Once you have that, that mentality as an organisation, once you challenge your structures and your kind of usual processes of booking, um, you're asking who's not on the stage and why, who's not in the room and why, who's not on our board and why. Once you start to challenge those systems, then I think um, you scratch beneath the surface and find the talent that kind of should be on your level, but it's not getting there. Over 300 organisations have signed up to the Key Change 50-50 pledge, including festivals, record labels and publishers. But is solving gender inequality really that simple? We're, we're hopeful. Like We think that this is a realistic target, which is why, why we put it in kind of this five-year time frame because we didn't want it to just be a kind of tokenistic knee-jerk reaction to, to wider mainstream pressure. Obviously, we hope that most of the festivals and organisations will achieve the pledge that they um, set up. And some of them already are, some of them won't, but we're hopeful. Whatever the road ahead, it's clear that gender inequality both on and off stage is going to be a big challenge to tackle. But there are reasons to be optimistic, because women are speaking out about their experiences and there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes too. We do have a thousand years of patriarchy that we are dealing with. You know, there's a lot of, a, a lot of music that could have been created over the past, you know, however many years. And we've never got to hear. This isn't a music industry problem, this is a society's problem. It's not a new thing, it's a long-standing issue that women face barriers. I think that things are changing and we are very hopeful that progression is happening. I think we, we're all starting to speak out now and I think that's only been in the last few years. Nothing happens overnight, you know, it's a long process. The problem is way further back than we think. It's not about right now in the industry, we're not letting women in. There's, there's, no, there's no exam to get in. I just don't think we have enough confidence to know we can. There's absolutely no reason why a young woman coming into the industry now can't be as successful as a young man. So I think it's a long way to go, but I think it's moving in the right direction. I do really believe that we're going to be living in a time where women are really going to have to speak up louder and we're going to have to make noise and cause some sort of disruption to be heard and to be taken seriously. I'm feeling hope for the future of music for sure because number one, women are speaking up, doing things differently and we're being less ashamed of who we are. And number two, young men in music are really fighting for us too. Speaking to lots of lots of young women up and down the UK, man, you are just far more informed, passionate, educated. You know, it's sort of the post Me Too gener generation. You're not going to stand for it, you know, in a way. So I've got I've got great hope that uh, that that things are going to change. Change can come also from your own views on yourself. I don't think men don't want us to be there but I do think we need to have that confidence to go I've got this <laughs>